Hello everybody, um, I'm Laura and tonight I am doing the Facebook solo. Carol and John have gone away on a holiday so um, it's just me. I'm very nervous so please go easy on me. I'm just going to quickly go through what we're going to be making tonight just while we wait for a few people to join us. So I'm just going to show you um, down here, Maria just has a look. This is what I'm going to be making. Now this recipe was done by Every Nook and Cranny and um, she made a black cherry version using the Mrs Whippy nozzle and um, she's very kindly shared it with us so I thought that we would try this tonight give it a go so here's one I prepared earlier but tonight I am using strawberry milkshake so this is just to show you so we've used the Mrs Whippy nozzle to make the meringue and then again to add this cream topping and I'm going to um, demonstrate both of those for you. I have pre-made the compote, um, but I will tell you how to make it during tonight's session. So we'll just have a little look at that. We've got a few people with us yet, Maria. <laughs> I've, okay, I just need to say um, a, a quick hello to Mum and John, seeing as they're not here, enjoying themselves. So um, make sure you give me a wave, Mum. Well, um, Caroline is here with us. All right, brilliant. <laughs> it feels really weird for me this tonight because normally I have a mum and she does all the introductions and everything, and I just kind of come in and do my thing and then leave. So, um, you just have to bear with me. I'm probably rambling on as well, so sorry about that. But what else we're going to do tonight, as well as this pavlova? Is I'm going to decorate a unicorn cake for you. I'm also going to do some unicorn cupcakes and I'm going to show you how to make the unicorn, the ears, um, the eyes and I'm also going to be using the Karen Davis sugar paste to do that with and I'm going to be spraying them in this edible luster spray. I'm going to give that a go tonight to see how that is. And I'm also going to do a couple of cupcakes with these sugar pie pins. Now that we sell them on our website and they are £2.49 for a pack of 12. And they're great just to mix in if you're doing cupcakes so you can do a few different variations. But I'll be showing you those tonight. These are the colours that I've used for my buttercream. Three of which I've made up. So I've used the Colour Splash Jade, Pale Pink violet, pistachio and lemon and I've just used a drop of each just to get a nice pastel -y colour. So, we've got, we've got a few more people now Maria. Yes, we'll get started then. So just to say again, tonight's recipe that I'm doing is by Every Nook and Cranny. So thank you for sharing that recipe with us um, she did the black cherry version um, but I'm doing the strawberry milkshake one tonight just for something different but you can use black cherry you can use other flavours you just need to adjust the fruit for your compote and your fresh fruit on top so I'm going to get started I'm just going to go through the ingredients that we're going to use so here I've got 100 grams of egg whites I've used large eggs and um, it's approximately three eggs that you need. I'm going to use 100 grams of our strawberry milkshake icing sugar and I've got 50 grams of caster sugar. I've also got some white wine vinegar and some corn flour which we're going to be using um, later on. So we're just going to start with using the, making the meringue. So we're going to put the egg whites into a mixer now it is really important that you clean out your mixer well so before I've started I've just used a damp kitchen cloth with a little bit of lemon juice on and I've just wiped down my whisk and the inside of my mixing bowl just to make sure that it's free of grease so I'm just going to set that down onto a medium setting while it starts to form some nice peaks for us Now 
I just found that it's getting ready. I'll just show you what else you're going to need. So I've got some on the bits now. We're going to use the Mrs. Whippy Nifty Nozzle tonight, which is this one. This is one of our genuine Russian piping nozzles. Now these would normally retail at $4.99, but um, Carol and John have reduced them down to £3.50 at the moment, so if you haven't got one, now's your chance. They're a great nozzle, you can do lots of different things with them, starting with this recipe. So, while I'm waiting for my egg whites, I'm just going to prepare my piping bag. So you just need to snip off about one and a half, two inches from your piping bag. Oh, and I've preheated pre the oven as well for the meringue up to 120 degrees. So you need to make sure that your oven's ready. So I just need to take a little bit more off until I can see the nozzle. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make sure that all the slips through the piping bag so I just need to keep doing this until all my nozzles coming through. There we go, like that, see that. Okay, so that's ready there. I've also got a baking tray here which we're going to cook our pad over on and I've just um, got a piece of parchment paper ready for us to put our meringue on. So we're all set up. Is whipping. So this, this is what we're looking for in our meringue. So we just want this nice soft peaks. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add the caster sugar to the icing sugar. I'm just going to stir that in. Now I'm using the icing sugar mixed with caster sugar. The caster sugar just helps to give it um, more stability. The icing sugar, you can you can use all icing sugar if you wanted to, but I'm using the icing sugar um, just to make sure that I get that stiffness with the caster sugar and I get the flavouring from the icing sugar. But you still get a nice, crispy, dewy scented meringue. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to pop this back down, put it back onto a medium mix and I'm just going to gradually add in a teaspoon at a time of icing sugar. And I'm doing it one teaspoon at a time just so that I can make sure that the sugar is being mixed in well. Yeah, yeah, you can just use the icing sugar. Um, the, I just use most meringue. I'll just turn this off so you can hear. Most meringue um, recipes ask you to use caster sugar, and um, but we. We're at sugar and crumbs, we like to use icing sugar in everything. You can use all icing sugar, you can use all caster sugar. I find that it's nicer to do 100 grams of icing sugar and 50 grams of caster sugar. And I always seem to get a perfect, nice, gooey, chewy meringue at the end. So I'm just going to keep adding this in. You just have to bear with me, it takes a bit of time. Just doing this, I'm just going to quickly run through 
how I made the compote because I made it earlier. And the reason why I made it earlier was because it, it took me about 15 20 minutes to make, and um, I just thought it would be easier to pre make it. One, because I was doing the um, demonstration meringue here, but two, just so that you didn't have to watch me boiling strawberries for 15 minutes. So, what I've used is um, 300 grams of strawberries that I've chopped and diced and then I've put them in a pan of warm, a pan, um, a pan over a medium heat and I've just simmered them with 50 grams of caster sugar and one teaspoon of water and all you do is you put that all in your pan and you just keep stirring, stirring all the time till it all starts to form this nice syrupy texture at the bottom. When it, when your strawberries are, are starting to look quite soft you need to take them out and this is the same if you wanted to do a cherry compote or if you wanted to do um, a raspberry compote it's exactly the same you just reduce it down keep stirring take out the fruit and then you just carry on stirring until your um, compote turns into a nice syrupy mixture I have put the recipe on the website tonight so you can find out how to do it at home. But that's the compo that I've got ready there. I'm just going to keep adding the icing sugar until we've got it all in. Now what we're looking for is this nice glossy whipped meringue, but just to make sure that we've got everything mixed in well, I'm just going to push, push down the sides just to make sure all that sugar is being whipped in. And what you need to do a couple of times when you think it's nearing getting ready is just take a little pinch of the meringue and rub it between your fingers. If you can feel any grains then it's not ready, which this isn't just yet. Um, I've just scraped down that icing sugar from the sides so we'll just give it another quick mix so again on high Just try that again. So a little pinch. Feels there's any grains, which it, there doesn't feel like there's any now. So I'm just going to pop that down with my fingers, and I'm going to add in. So I've got some white wine vinegar here, and you can use cider vinegar as well. Just using half a teaspoon. So I'm going to pop that in, and then I'm going to use one teaspoon of corn flour. And again, I'm just going to give that a quick mix on high. So that's that's what we're looking for with our meringue. So it's nice and glossy. It's holding its shape. So we're just going to scrape that off from the whisk. They are asking if is corn flour the same as corn starch. I think I think so, but I don't. I think corn corn starch is normally American. But co 
cornflower. I've just bought this cornflower tonight from um, from the supermarket. It's um, it's normally um, just with the flour, and it's very cheap. Um, and it just it just helps your meringue to hold its sh shape. That's why we're adding it in. But I, I don't know whether it's definitely the same as cornstarch. It's just called cornflour here. So my meringue's ready. I've got my baking parchment ready here. I'm just going to use a little bit of the extra meringue here just to dab a little bit onto the baking sheet. And this is just to stop the paper from lifting up when we put it in the oven. Okay, so I've got a cup here, I've got my nozzle ready in the bag. Now you can hold it in your hand, but if you find it easier, you can put it over a cup. Just so you can get everything right to the bottom. I'm just going to put about half of the meringue in to start off with. that down into your nozzle like that okay so we're going to pipe in a four by two arrangement and the idea is is that we're going to get nice eight nice serving slices so you just want to I'm going to start at the back here and I'm just going to hold the nozzle horizontally um down and just squeeze a nice high pile like that and then I'm just going to leave a tiny little gap because it does expand in the oven. And I'm just going to do my second one there. Like so. So you can see with the nozzle you're getting a nice ripply effect. And then I'm just going to do one more here. Again, you want to make sure that you've got some height on your meringue. So you do sink slightly. I'm just going to fill up my bag a little bit more. I hope that we're doing all right everyone so <laughs> please give us a like if it's going well me and Maria are completely new to this like I say it's normally Carol and John and um, they're on holiday so Maria's new to the filming I'm on completely on my own with no um, no helpers nobody to tell me what to do <laughs> we have more than two hundred okay brilliant okay so I'm going to carry on this um pattern that we can do here so I'm just going to do another rosette here at the back and then two more at the front another one here so I'm just leaving a slight gap between them so they've got a chance to expand in the oven everybody thinks that we are doing great okay brilliant <laughs> Me and Maria normally do videos on our own, so I normally just speak to Maria while, while I'm doing it, but this, um, this just feels really strange being by myself. And I'm hoping that nothing goes wrong. Uh, they are asking which fresh cream is the best in the UK. Which fresh cream? Yes. To put on the top? Yes. You can use double cream or you can use whipping cream. I um, I always find that the whipping cream whips a bit too fast for me, so I always use the double cream. But you use exactly the same amount. You just don't need to whip the whipping cream as much as your double cream. So I'm just going to put one more nice big meringue rosette there at the back, and then we're just going to use the remainder just to fill in these little gaps in the middle and that's just going to hold it all together so later when we've cooked it we can um, bring it out and put it onto a serving tray and it's all going to hold together. Whipping cream or double? You can use whipping or, or double cream. 
but that's that's to go on top of the meringue this is the meringue mixture that we're doing at the moment so now i'm just going to pop them in the oven and we're going to leave them to cook for an hour and 15 minutes i'm going to do a here's one i prepared earlier so i've got on the tray here the meringue that i did earlier so this has been cooked it's had a chance to cool down and um, I'm going to show you how we finish putting it together. So if just bear with me a moment. I just need to quickly get rid of this mess. Get another clean bowl and whisk. So now I've got, I'm using double cream tonight. Oops, which I've just spilled everywhere. I'll just wipe that up. Forgot that I already opened it. <laughs> and I just need to wash my nozzle. So I've just washed out my nozzle again, which is here, and I'm just going to again pop it in the bag so that we can do the cream. And again, you're just looking to make sure that you're not blocking any of the cups in the nozzle so that everything can come out. So I'm going to flavour the cream, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the double cream into there and I'm just going to slightly whip it just to get a little, a little bit of thickness. And I've got my icing sugar here. You need to whip your cream slightly at first just to make sure that it's getting all that um, air into it before you add in your icing sugar, otherwise it might not whip as well. You can see that the cream has slightly thickened there, so I'm just going to add in the icing sugar, and that's just to add extra flavour to our meringue. And I'm just going to whip that in quickly. And you need to be really careful that you don't over whip it. So I'm just going to scrape that out and just fold in some of the icing sugar that's at the side just so that I don't end up with over whipped cream. Okay, so we're going to take our Mrs. Whippy nozzle in the piping bag, just open that up. Add the cream. May I ask you what which icing sugar did you use? I've used strawberry milkshake um, tonight because we're doing a strawberry version of this pavlova. But like I say, every nook and cranny did a black cherry version, so she used 
um, black cherry and made a black cherry compote. So you can follow the recipe online exactly the same. You're just changing the flavour of the icing sugar and the flavour of the fruit that you're going to use. So again, we've got eight individual portions here. So we're just going to pipe on top of each one with a nice big splodge of cream. like that i absolutely love cream so i'm going to do a very good size portion here obviously you can do as much or as little but i really think the cream makes a meringue i tried this yesterday with family and um if they weren't there i would have honestly probably have ate it all myself i am eating for two so i can get away with it slightly at the moment I need to add a little bit more cream. I'm just adding in the remainder of the cream there. For this last one. So you just squeeze in and letting those nice waffles come out like that. Okay, so. I've got the strawberry compote here and all you're going to do is drizzle now when you make this compote even though it looks like um, a lot that you're making initially you only actually end up with two to three tablespoons of compote but it is just to you know add that little extra fruit element Not sure you could say it was one of your five a day, but tastes good. So once you've drizzled that on top like that, I'm just going to take some fresh strawberries, which I've got here, and I'm just going to cut them in half. And just place them on the top like that. I bet my mum wishes she was here because she'd be all over this now. Unfortunately, Mum, you're too far away and we'll eat it on your behalf. So just add in get one more strawberry. And there you go. So that's every nook and crannies. Summer pavlova using the Mrs. Whippy nozzle. I'll just quickly show you how you would then separate it. So if you was going to just grab a plate. If you was going to serve this up, you could just slice a section off. And there you go. Nice little summer dessert. What do we think? Is anybody going to make this? Yes. Yeah? So really, you can't beat meringue and cream and strawberries. It is Wimbledon after all. Um, so, there we go. Okay, so I'm just going to have to give me a minute while I set up for the unicorn cake. I'm just going to move some of this mess out the way so anybody that wants to do this recipe it, the, it is on our website at the moment on the sugar and crumbs it's www.sugarandcrumbs.com and it's called a summer pavlova mrs whippy's summer pavlova so So I'm just going to pop them over there in the rear. So 
this is what we're going to be doing next. So I'm going to demonstrate how to make a unicorn cake using the nifty nozzles. Now all our nozzles are the genuine nifty nozzles and um, Carol and John did an offer last week where you could buy the um, nifty nozzles for a discounted price and um, she's going to extend that now because we're using these nozzles tonight so the um, nozzles are going to be available up until Wednesday they're normally £3.49 they'll be down to £2.25 so I'm also going to, I'm going to show you how to make the horn the ears, decorate it and um, put it all together for you so I'm just going to put these bits aside get rid of some of this mess that I've made so I'm using the Karen Davies um, marshmallow flavour sugar paste which we, is available on our website it tastes absolutely amazing I can't recommend it enough it's so easy to work with as long as you don't eat too much of it you could actually make something with it So I'm going to start with showing you how to make one. I've made one already earlier just because I wanted to make sure I had something that had already set. And I'm also going to show you how to put together some unicorn cupcakes. So I've made a little mini version of um, the horns and hairs here, which I'm going to assemble together. I'm going to show you how to make the big one. So what you need is your sugar paste. And I'm just going to use the cornflower patch just to put down just to stop it sticking. To my board I'm just going to give it a quick knead just to soften it up ready for us to make so the size of the um, unicorn that you want to make depends really on the size of the cake that you're going to be making I'm just going to demonstrate on this um, dummy cake which is a I think it's a around about a five or six inch cake but you do want you do want to have a good size horn. So now that I've kneaded that together, I'm just going to separate some of it up. So I'm just going to chop it in half and then in half again. I'm going to use this bit to make a cone shape. We have a lot of views. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just still trying to get it nice and kneaded in at the moment just to make sure that it's easy to work with. My hands get really hot so I like to rub a lot of corn flour on my hands. And especially this time of year when it is warm, your hands do tend to get a bit stickier. So I'm going to roll it between your hands and then we're going to start rolling it into a cone shape so if you roll it in between the palm of your hands you get um, a wide bottom and then the top end starts to come up so you just want to kind of get already a sort of horn shape it needs to have some kind of fat bottom just so that you can stick it to the top of your cake. Okay, so once you've got that kind of shape there, so you've got a nice little tip at the top and a wide fat bottom like that. Just pop that aside. Now, the bit that we chopped off the, the other half of this, I've got here. So again, we just need to knead that together.
make sure you've got plenty of corn flour if you've got um, a rolling mat even better you can use that so we're just going to roll it out into a very long sausage shape and you just need to keep rolling you need to start in the centre and gradually let your fingers go out and you just need to keep going until we get a nice even long sausage because we're going to have to wrap this all the way around our horn to get that nice shape So I've gone a little, slightly little bit thin on that side, so I'm just going to thin this side out a bit. Okay. Just a little bit more. And don't worry that when I made one earlier and when I've made these unicorn cakes before, I don't always get this piece to be exactly the right length um, but you can add to it so don't panic it's not the end of the world you're just trying to get it as long as you can for now mm -hmm. so we're going to bring back our little horn here they're asking if you can color the sword base with any pair or... yeah you can so if you wanted to color it so say you wanted a, a pink horn then yeah you can color it to start off with and um, so when you're kneading the sugar paste, you just add your little bit of colour in then and knead it in until the, the full piece of sugar paste is, has gone to the colour that you want it to be. I'm going to use a lustre spray tonight, which is why I'm not colouring this. Um, so I'm just showing you a different way of doing it. So you'll have to excuse my ridiculously long um, brush here, but it's the only one that I could find. So all you need to do is just Take a little bit of water and just give it a very light brush on your horn all the way to the tip, just like that. So we don't want it to be too sticky. Now you're going to take your big sausage and you're going to start by pressing one end onto the back there. And we're just going to go round the bottom and then we're going to gradually go up and we're just going to keep going round and round and round and it's the sugar paste is going to stick Now, I've not quite made it to the top, but don't worry. I'm just going to take a little bit more. Just a little tiny bit. And again, just roll it out into that sausage shape. And we can just add to it. So you don't need to panic. So I'll just quickly do that. And you're just going to start where you left off. So if you want... I've done quite a nice big chunky um, horn here, but if you wanted to do a thinner one, you'd just make that cone thinner at the start. Um, and again, if you want a tall, just make that cone taller to start with. So I'm just going to start where I left off, and I'm just going to go round and round and round until I get to the tip, like that. You just need to give everything a little press down. And there you go. So we're just going to pop that to the side while we make our ears. So the, I'll just give that away because I've got some water there. So take the other piece of sugar paste that we had. And we're just going to make the ears. Now this is just the way that I make my um unicorn horns and if anybody's got little girls 
I absolutely love anything to do with unicorns at the moment. My daughter can't get enough. And the amount of times that I've made unicorn cakes just for absolutely no reason is um, getting a bit ridiculous, really. We eat a lot of cake. Okay, so I've kneaded that. I'm just going to put it into a sausage kind of shape and I'm just going to half it. And then that's just to make sure that my um, two pieces are quite even. Can mm -hmm. you can you remind us what are you doing? Please? So I'm making the unicorn horn and the ears ready to um, assemble the unicorn cake together. So I'm going to show you how to decorate a full unicorn cake as well as some cupcakes. So this is just to make the horn and ears. So I've got two. Um, even circles there. Now I just use the back of a spoon and just press down, holding the sides at the same time. Press down just to get that nice ear shape and then I just give it a little pinch at the top there. So just pushing down the spoon to get that like curve of the ear and then a little pinch. We're just going to do exactly the same with this one. So pushing down with the spoon. Holding it at the sides because I don't want it to go too wide. I just want to get that in a ear shape. And I'm just giving it a little pinch. So you just do that until you get two similar size ears. Okay, so we've got our horn, we've got our ears. These are the ones that I made earlier that I've dried. I'm just going to show you what to do if you if you haven't coloured. You should be pissed. I'm just going to get these colours out box just to show you some other colours that you can use. This is our colour splash range. So all these could be used for something like this. So this is a selection of colours. And they're all available on our website. And as you can see there's plenty to choose from. Like a never ending selection so they're all there so they're the colour splash colours and um, that I'm going to use tonight I'm going to use the um, hint of gold which is this one here and then just over the top of it I'm just going to give it um, a light spray of the PME edible luster spray in gold as well so I'll just move these to the side so you can see what we've got there So with the horn that I made earlier, I'm just going to tear off a bit of parchment paper. I'm going to put this one over here. I'm just going to take my ears and my horn. I'm just using a bit of parchment paper just to stop it from going everywhere. I'm trying not to go all over myself either. Big size no, nozzle was used for the pavlova? It was the Mrs. Whippy nozzle. The Mrs. Whippy nozzle um, was what I used for both the cream and for the meringue. And um, that's normally 4 99 But as I say, Carol and John have extended the offer um, of reduced nozzles till Wednesday. So at the moment you can get that nozzle for £3.50. Okay, so I'm just going to... This is a hint of gold, this one, so it's very light. And I'm going to do my horn a bit darker. 
So we're just going to, once we've done this, we're just going to put them aside. So this is the PME Gold Luster Spray that I'm using. I'm just spraying this now just to get it ready for when we assemble together. So I'm just going to put them aside. I'm going to get started with decorating the um, unicorn cake. And just to explain to you what, what I've used. So I'll just move these little ones out of the way as well. A little cupcake. So earlier today I've whipped up one kilo of buttercream. So that's 500 grams of unsalted butter. And then I've used the um, velvet vanilla icing sugar, which I've used a kilo of. So it's whatever quantity of um, butter you're using, you use double the amount of icing sugar. So I've already made three colors earlier going to add some more colours and get them ready. Can make this um, unicorn cake nice and colourful. Getting our mate Maria. <laughs> You're getting out of me. So these are the colours that I've used here. So this is part of the colour splash range. So I've used a little tiny bit of lemon here. I've used the jade, which is this one here. And I've used the pale pink so far. And I'm just going to add in a little bit of violet to this one. And a little bit of the pistachio colour splash. What butter have one. you used? So I've just I've just used um, supermarket's own brand. Two hundred um, to make a kilo five hundred grams of so two blocks of butter plus one kilo of icing sugar. Okay, so I'll just give these a quick mix. So I'm just trying to get a nice pastel colour, so I've not used a lot of any of these colours. Obviously, if you wanted to go really bright with your unicorn cake, then add, a, add some more and just gradually build it up till you get the colour that you want. Just mix in the violet. They are skinny brown, the butter. Um, just supermarkets own brand we don't use any fancy butter we, we never have we just um, we just use the supermarkets own cheapest one oh getting our make okay so Gonna add a little tiny drop more just to get a bit of a deeper colour. Whoops, not meant to do that. <laughs> just mix that in quickly. So they great these colour splash gels. 
Um, I think there's about 49 in the range. So there's plenty to choose from, but they are absolutely brilliant. And we use them for everything that we do with sugar and crumbs. All the flowers that you see Carol makes, she always uses those colours. And they're very easy to use and they do last a long time as well. Okay, so. I've got all my colours ready there. nozzles that I'm using tonight are here. So I'll just go run through what we've got here. So we've got the ruby nozzle which is um, a really nice rose flower. Very popular on our on our website and again these are all which still going to be reduced on our website until Wednesday just to give anybody a chance that's watching tonight to get their nozzles. We've got the Starburst one, which is a very pretty, delicate flower here. And then we've also got the um, Jasmine one there. And I'm using the Summer Tulip. Now these are the genuine Russian nozzles, the um, genuine made by Alexander. The best quality that you can get. And I know that we're always going on about it, but if you buy the genuine ones, you're never going to need to buy them again. Okay. And I'm also going to be using the Wilton 1M, which is this one. And I'm going to show you um, this on the unicorn cake, but I'm also going to pipe onto the cupcakes as well with that one, just show you some different things that you can do. When you put your nozzles in your bag, you just need to make sure that the nozzle's just poking Can you read through. the name of each nozzle? Yeah, I can, yeah. So this one is the ruby nozzle. So that's um, a 12 petal rose. Got a starburst, which is a very pretty, delicate flower. We've got the jasmine. And we've got the summer tulip. And then I'm using the Wilton 1M as well. Carol is really happy because we have more than 65,000 views. So okay. we're doing well. <laughs> I'm doing well. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to get these uh, nozzles ready as quickly as I can. So I'm just going to fill them up. So these are great little spatulas, again we use these quite a lot, they're just so much easier to use than a big spatula when you're getting your nozzles ready. So I'm not going to fill these too high. Just trying to give do this as quickly as possible. Just bear with me. Use the jade in this starburst nozzle. which is the 1M. I'm just going to two-tone this one. So I'm just going to add a layer of green on the outside. So I've just put a little blob in there and I'm just scraping it up the sides. 
of my piping bag. Like that, you can see. And I think I can fill the middle with some yellow. blue in. It is a unicorn cake after all and want it to be colourful. You just need to open up. So where I put that last colour, I'm just going to separate that slightly to the side as well as I did with the green. And I'm going to put that bit of blue that I've got left. You might not see that straight away but by the end you will. nozzles ready there. We'll lay them out. I understand the Young's work now. I do understand what? <laughs> because uh, Young says that he I'm better than him but I'm not. <laughs> Just take it Maria, we're doing well, we're doing all right. We're on our own. We've been nervous all day. Okay, so I left one bowl white, and the reason for that is that because I'm going to cover the um, cake with this. So I'm just going to start by putting quite a. I've, it would be better to use a turntable, but as I'm in um, the Sugar and Crumbs kitchen, I've got no idea where there is one, and I run out of time. So the idea is is just to get a nice even layer all the way round the cake and I will get a board in a second to pop this on I'll just make a mess for a minute can you repeat please the, what nozzle you are using? yep so I'm going to be using the ruby nozzle which is the rose one and I'm going to also be using so I think this this one is the ruby there, um, this is the summer tulip. The next one, the yellow one. This one is the starburst, and this one is the jasmine. So, like I say, if you haven't got these nozzles, get them while you can while they're on offer because it's just been extended till Wednesday. And after that, they'll be going back to the normal price. So you might as well get them now. Okay, so now that I've got a layer on, I'm just going to clean down the, my palette knife. And I'm just going to try and smooth that out around the sides. Like I say, if you had a turntable, it would be much easier. The tables are on the grey shelves next door. They're on the grey shelves next door. Yeah, if you was there, Mum, you'd be able to go and get me one. <laughs> is that what is that what my mum's put? <laughs> they are asking why you're not using a turntable. Yeah, because just because I couldn't find one. I think my mum's trying to tell me where there is one, so we're just having the whole tin episode again when I made fudge and I forgot the tin. I just can't always remember everything. Okay, so I'll just let um, Maria show you those nozzles one more time and the colours that I've used while I just go and find the turntable because it will be easier when I start with.
about that, everyone. Okay, so found board as well. Just careful over. Again, just need to have a little spread on the top as well. Now this is much easier when you're doing it on a real cake because you've got that weight in the cake to keep you to keep it on the board. When you're using a dummy, it's just so light. It just wants to come off. So <laughs> like that. You can use a bit of buttercream in the bottom. In the bottom. Yeah. Okay, so carry on adding buttercream, taking it away just to get a nice smooth finish as possible. I'm obsessed with the um, palette knife, so I just like to do everything with them. You can also use a cake scraper to get a nice smooth finish. Okay, so let's start decorating. Okay, so I actually find it easier to add my um, horn and ears to start off with, just because then I can work round them. So I'm just going to go for my horn and I'm just going to place it in the centre of my cake, like that. So this is the front, sorry. <laughs> and then I'm just going to add on my ears. So I've left like a little flat edge. So when I smoothed it out before, I've just left that little flat edge there just so that it can stick to the cake. Like that. Okay. So we're going to start off with the 1M nozzle. So I'm just going to, you'll see me keep wiping down my nozzles and that's just to make sure that the finish that I'm getting on the cake is is cleaner and it just um, so looks what better. So is that? So this is the Wilton 1M nozzle. So if I can, um, I'm going to have to try and do this so that you can see at the same time. I always find it easier to start at the front to do that big swirl, big first swirl for the unicorn you would have seen so I'm going to start in the center I'm going to give a nice big squeeze there just to give it a little bit of height and then I'm going to push and go round like that so we've got that starting point and then I'm also going to do another one here at the back so you can see that the colour is starting to come through. Now the idea with the unicorn cake is that you start with that middle main bit in line with your horn and then you come to the back and then sweep round to the side. So I've got one at the front, one at the there. I'm just going to add one to the back here like that. So just starting in the middle and swirling outwards. I'm just going to put that aside at the moment. And I'm going to take my first nifty nozzle, which is the ruby one. And I'm just going to place my first flower there. So you just push in, squeeze in and lift in. So you can see that one there. So I'm going to try and decorate this back to front. Obviously, it's easier for you to be looking at it. I'm going to add another one here. So squeeze, lift to get some height and add there. And then again, I'm going to do another one behind the horn here. Now there's no um, there's no real order to this. This is just kind of um, you 
being creative and, and putting them where you want. It's just it's just nice to get the different colours and the different flowers in different places so that you've got a lot of different um different texture um, different colours and different styles going on through your cake. So I'm gonna bring my main down to this side here. So I'm gonna also add some um, round onto the board as well. So we'll place one there and then we'll take the next one which is the starburst. So we'll place one in here so we just squeeze, lift and release. We'll add one to the back here, squeeze, lift, release. So this is the starburst nozzle and you just want to randomly place these wherever you feel is necessary. Okay, so I'll just put that on the side. So now we've got the jasmine one. So again, we'll add one here, maybe one here, and we'll do one at the back there. And we'll scatter a few here on the board and you can keep going back and, and adding more wherever you want it's just I'm trying to make sure that I've got um, all the, I'm using all the different nozzles so we'll just go back to the front there so, you can see. so the last nozzle that I'm using is the summer tulip so we'll place one in here one behind the horn there, we'll have one here and then again just randomly. They are asking if you, if we sell a, a stable glitter on our website. Sell a what? Stay a stable glitter. glitter. Sorry. <laughs> sell a table glitter on your website. I'm not really sure what that means. Do you mean the, do you mean the turntable? Was it was it Andrea? Let's ask that oh, question. Okay. Anthony. Okay. Anthony, can you just um, please um, say I'm not really too sure what you what you're asking. Do we, do we sell the table glitter? Do you mean the board? Or the turntable. I'm not. I'm not too sure. But we can. Um, if you if you message us again, we might be able to help. I'm not. I'm just not really too sure what you mean by that. Okay. So I'm just going to carry on adding. So now that I've got the majority on, I'm just going to keep going round, just adding in, filling in any gaps, just so that we've got variation. few more roses in. You want to make sure that you've got a lot of you know different different colour mixed up. Okay. Push in there at the end. So we're just getting that nice main effect. So we've started from the front here and we're just kind of scooping across. Anywhere we need to add a bit more. Okay. So I'm just going to use the one end nozzle because it's um, like a little star shaped. All these little gaps that I've got in between my flowers, I can just add in a little squeeze with the one end. Obviously, if you wanted to use um, more nozzles than I've used tonight, then of course you could do that as well. I'm just going to fill in all these little gaps. Ah, like that. It means edible glitter. Edible glitter. We do do ed edible glitter on our website, yeah. Um, we do the um, rainbow dust. 
which um, they, they're, they're all on the website. Sorry about that, Anthony. Just didn't quite understand what you what you meant. Okay, so let's finish off. I did a little bit there, and there you go. So just start from the front. So obviously you can add in some little eyes as well. That may most people use like a little black um, eyelash, like what would be on here. So you just cut a little piece of black icing sugar for each one and you can add eyelashes if you wanted to but the idea is, is that you get that main effect so I'll just show you from the front we've got our ears, our horn, we've got the start of the mane here if you can go over the over the top, just look at the top so we've just filled in the top behind the ears and then if I just turn it around you can see that we've got this shape we've got lots of different Colours going on. This is obviously the pastel version, but again, if you wanted to do a brighter version, then you then you could do mix it up. But that's just to give you an idea. And obviously, by using the nifty nozzles, you're just creating something different than the unicorn cakes that you've probably seen the most of. So I'm just going to pop that there. And I'm just going to show you to how to do some cupcakes. So, I've got a few cupcakes here, there's one here. So it, to add to your cake, if you wanted to do something else, you could make a few um, cupcakes as well. I'm just going to show you a few different things. So I'm just going to quickly fill my bag up, it's got a bit low. something that you can do easy to follow I will then um, I haven't put it on the website but I will do and um, put the video on the website from tonight so that you can um, make it at home watch at home and make it yourself and it's a, a great one to do with the kids my um, daughter Holly loves using the nozzles and um, I've been trying to convince her today that she should probably do a kids Facebook live and get this get the kids showing kids how to do cake related things so I'm working on it we'll, we'll have to see how we get on so we're just going to fill this last bag I've made a little mini version of the unicorn horn here and I've done some little ears so it's exactly the same um, principle as I did before you just um, make your little cone make your little sausage shape and um, add a little bit of water and swirl around and then again with the mini ears I've just used this tool here so I've just done a little ball and then I've squashed it down using this to give you that ear shape and then again just pinched at the top to get the two little ears so I'm just going to show you how to put a few cupcakes together I'm also going to show you these sugar pipings now these are the unicorn ones that I've got here tonight but we do do a big range of sugar pipings they're two pounds 49 on the website you get 12 they're brilliant for special occasions and um, we made some last week when we had our um our Simon society cupcake day and then we put a few of these on and we got so many comments from them they're just so pretty so you get a couple of rainbows get a few different unicorns but they're really cute so two pounds 49 we do do different ones we do ones that are for weddings and um, ones that are for boys 
Um, there's, there's lots of different ones. They're, they're from the um, Cool Pit Sugar Pipings, £2.49. So, back to the cupcakes. I'm going to show you a few different ones. So I'm going to show you how to use the horn that I've made. So, to start with, you just need to take a little bit of your um, extra icing sh um, buttercream that you've got and just give your cupcake a little spread like that so just do one at a time just to make sure that it doesn't dry so you only need a little bit on it's just to give it something to stick to i'm just going to wipe a little bit of buttercream under my horn here and i'm going to just stick that in the center now i'm not going to add my ears first i'm just going to do a little bit of piping first and then add the ears just because the flowers are going to look quite big on this one so to start with I'm going to use the Wilton 1M nozzle and I'm just going to do that swirl just to start with at the front there just a mini version so you can see that my colours are coming through now and I'm just going to add in a couple of the um, flowers so it's just push against the cake squeeze lift Give a bit of height so I think it's nice on the cupcakes just to do one of each flower so I've got the summer tulip there the jasmine I'm just going to add in the beauty at the back here and then my last nozzle which is the starburst which I've not got a lot of buttercream left but we'll give it a go just going to add that in there like that and then I take the two ears make sure you've got them the right way round and then you can just add them in at the side of the flowers there and then again as we did on the big cake just use your 1M just to fill in any little gaps that you've got going on and there you go you've got a, a, a mini version of your big cake so I'm just going to pop that there next to the big one I'm just going to show you that one more time so we start with the cupcake a little bit of icing and um, keep going icing buttercream just spread it round the cupcake pop on the horn in the centre use the 1M to do that front swirl just gives you a, a, a focal point really and then again add in one of each flower onto the sides Oops. and fill in those little gaps And grab your two little ears and again right way round pop them in and again as I did with the big horn you could also colour this one if you wanted to so I'm just going to pop there so everything that I've used um, is available on the website so we've got the Karen Davies sugar paste marshmallow flavour which I've used for the um, horn and the ears We've got the 1M nozzle, which I've used on the big cake, and the um, little ones here, which is the Wilton 1M. And then I've used Ruby, which is the ro pink rose here. Um, the Summer Tulip, which is the yellow one. The Jasmine nozzle here. And I've also used the Starburst, which is the, the little blue type one. Okay, so sugar pie pins. So again, a little bit of buttercream. You do this as you go because they do dry. By the time you've got round, especially if you're doing quite a few, by the time you've got round to them, they would have dried and you're going to end up doing it again. So just do one or two at a time just so that they're not going to dry out. 
So I'm going to show you what you can do with these sugar pumpkins that you can add to um, your collection. So to start off with, I'm just going to use this slightly shorter one here. You can do like an ice cream cone. So if you start with a blob in the middle here, then start from the outside and squeeze and go round and up and then right to the top, squeeze off, grab your little unicorn here and then just place it on the top like that. I'll pop that one there. And then you can also do a rose swirl. So you'd start in the centre of the cupcake here. So squeeze and just go round and round and just break off and then take another sugar pipe in I can pick it up and just where you've just cut off there you can just add that so we'll pop that one there like that and I'll just quickly show you them again So a little bit of buttercream. What nozzle are you using? Now? I'm using the the Wilton One M nozzle at the moment. It's a, it's a very versatile nozzle, so you can do quite a lot of different things with it. But as we're doing um, unicorns tonight, I'm just showing you um, how you can make a. So say say you have twelve cupcakes to decorate. You could do four, like this one here with the ice cream. Um, type of cone you could do four rose swirl and then you could do four in the um, mini unicorns so to make the rose swirl you're starting in the center and you're just going round and round the cupcake break off and add on your little sugar piping and it just fits in with the with the theme of the, of the unicorn. So you're just getting something a little bit different from each cupcake. And so now again with the um, ice cream one, start with a squirt in the middle and then start from the outside and work your way up. It's all gone a bit green now, so obviously if it started at the beginning, like this one, you can see that I've got the two tone in, um, but you could honestly do whichever colours you want to do. So I've got my ice cream comb on there, and we'll just add another unicorn piping to the top there, like that. And there you go. That is um, that is everything for tonight. I think. I think I've, have I done everything. Yeah. So I've just got a few things that I wanted to tell you about. So I'll just run through, I've got a few notes here. So again, I just want to say a big thank you to every nook and cranny for sharing her pavlova recipe, which we're going to absolutely enjoy once we've um, finished tonight. We'll be having these um, summer pavlovas, which are just here. And if you make these ahead, if you, obviously if you're having a dinner party or just having friends over for a barbecue, you can put them in the fridge and they're fine for two days. And you might just want to put the fruit on just before serving them. So thank you every nook and cranny for that recipe. Um, then I just want to quickly go through one more time with the unicorn cake. I've used the Starburst nozzle, the Ruby nozzle, Summer Tulip and Jasmine. And they are all reduced um, in the sale. Pam and John have extended their sale till Wednesday, and they are all reduced to two pounds twenty-five. And the Mrs. Whippy nozzle is normally four ninety-nine, but at the moment you can get it for three pounds fifty. So make use of that if you um, if you want anything. I've used the Karen Davies sugar paste, which is available on our website. It's, it's very good for all modelling types of things like this great for using in, um, in obviously the moulds as well and then we've got the colour splash range which I've used the hint of gold for my ears tonight 
and then I've used the PME Luster Spray which um, I've coloured the horn here obviously if you wanted to go dark you could just give it another coat so that's on our website as well and um, these little um, cupcake cases are also available on our website the Wilton 1M nozzle I've used to do the main swirls and the sugar pie pins they are a pack of 12 two pounds 49 and we do do a lot of variations with them as well so that leads me to just tell you what is coming up in the next couple of weeks so on the 10th of July which is next week we have got Louise Brimlow visiting us and she was on the very first Great British Bake Off um, anybody that goes to the cake shows would have probably seen her on the Maso Ticino sat stand she's a lovely woman and we really enjoy having her around when she's popped in before and um, she's great fun and she's going to be making a drip cake and she's also going to be doing meringue kisses so make sure you tune in next week and um, to catch Louise and then on the 17th of July Carol's going to be back well, she'll be back next week so you'll see her next week but she's going to be back on her own on the 17th of July and um, making another creation with nifty nozzles for you to try so um, make sure you come back for that one and then on the, I'm not sure if it's the 23rd or the 24th of July because I've been given two dates but it's the following Monday after the 17th of July and we've got Christina Lundler visiting us um, now she's going to be making um, a cake using the Karen Davies Orate Pearl Effect Mould and she's going to be using the Karen Davies Sugar Paste again as well so you can see that now um, Christina is just releasing her new book which is this one it's Vintage Cake Decorations Made Easy and I've had um, a look through this over the weekend and I've got to say um, I would really love to have this she's just released this book and we're taking pre-orders tonight on the website so if you would like a copy they are going to be 12 99 and um, because Christina is visiting us she's going to sign the copies for you as well on the night that she's here so then they will come out to you so if you pre-order now you can ask pre-order on Facebook or on the website the 12 99 You'll have a signed copy. You can also ask Christina as well what would you, what message you would like. So if it's a gift for somebody, then you can say it's to this person or what or whatever you wish to have. So it's a great book. There's some really good ideas in there, and like she says, they're made easy. So make sure you have a look at that. Um, the postage is two ninety nine, but if you order some other goodies from our website and get over thirty pounds then it'll be free delivery so that's that and then the last thing that I need to tell you about sorry that I'm going on a bit long but I've got a lot of um, notes that I've been given here and um, the last thing to say is that the Alzheimer's Society Cupcake Day we have um, a new total on our Just Giving page which is £1,727.82 pence so thank you so much for everybody that's donated Everybody that came to our cupcake day, um, it's just um, such a good charity and we really wanted to help them and we really appreciate everybody getting involved with that and to the bakers that also did their own cupcake days and donated to our page, thank you. And um, I think that's everything. So thank you everybody, I will be back with a quick catch up in about 10 minutes time so if anybody's got any more questions then come back with me then. I'm just going to have a quick tidy up and I'll run through anything that anybody wants to know about again. So thank you for watching. Um, I hope it's been alright and you've enjoyed it. And um, Carol and John will be back next week. Bye.